So in this video, we're going to talk about how to name covalent bonds. We talked about the difference between ionic and covalent bonds, and it's really important to remember that a covalent bond is between two nonmetals. So when it's time to start naming bonds, the first thing you have to do is identify what type of bond you have. Because if you remember, when it's ionic, we'll, when we go to name it, we just write the name of the metal, the name of the nonmetal, and put it on the end. And then in ionic, when we want to find the formula, we have to find the charges for each element and switch them, transfer them, just like their electrons are transferred. Covalent is a little bit different. Covalent is between two nonmetals. And remember, two nonmetals on the periodic table will have the same charge. Not the same number of the charge, but the same type of charge. So they'll all be a negative charge. They all need to gain electrons. Because they all need to gain electrons, they can't transfer their electrons. They can just share what they have. So when we name these, we first identify their two nonmetals. So if this were my formula, nitrogen and oxygen, I would go here and I would say, okay, nitrogen and oxygen are both nonmetals, must be a covalent bond. In covalent bonds, instead of using charges, we use prefixes to tell us how many atoms of that element. So right here, that means we have two atoms of nitrogen for every five atoms of oxygen. So we're gonna use the prefixes to indicate the number of atoms. The only reason you would not use a prefix is if there's mono in the first thing. So we don't use mono before the first element. Otherwise, you will always have a prefix. So in this case, we have two nitrogens. So it would be di-nitrogen. And then I have five oxygens, so I would be penta ox, and then we put iod on the end of everything. Regardless of whether it's ionic or covalent, you will always have iod on the end. So some examples, I have carbon and two oxygens. So I have one carbon, so most people would want to put mono carbon dioxide, but we don't put mono in front of the first one. That's the only thing. Okay, so we have carbon, and one oxygen, so we put carbon monoxide. Remember, there will be a prefix in front of everything unless we have one atom in the first spot. So right here, we have the name, and we want to go back to the formula. So we have dihydrogen, so we have two hydrogens, monoxide, one oxygen. So let's look at some examples today. Okay, so we know that covalent bonds occur between nonmetals, and nonmetals. And then the electrons are shared, not transferred. So I have three examples here. I have one example with hydrogen and oxygen. I have two hydrogens, so I can put di in front of the first word, so I have dihydrogen monoxide. Okay, now I have carbon and hydrogen. Okay, and I have carbon and hydrogen right here. So I only have one carbon. Okay, so I'm not going to put mono in front of it. I'm just going to put carbon. And then I have one, two, three, four hydrogens. So I would put the prefix for four in front of hydrogen, which is tetra. So I would put carbon tetra, and then I need hydride. Remember, the spelling is not super important here. Just be sure that you have the prefix, the root of the word hydrogen, and IDE. Okay, I'm going to skip down to nitrogen and fluorine. You have one nitrogen in the middle, two fluorines on the outside. Okay, so we are going to have one nitrogen. Remember, I can't put mono in from the first spot, so I'm just going to do nitrogen. And then I have two fluorines. My prefix for two is di. So I'm going to do nitrogen difluoride. Okay, so that is how you name covalent bonds. All right, so just be sure that you go ahead and name your bonds based on do we have two nonmetals? Yes, we do. So we need to use prefixes. You will use a prefix 
in front of every word unless you are only talking about one element being in the first space. Okay? Also, you always put IDE on the end. So go ahead and practice that. I will talk to you soon. Okay, so really quick, I want to tell you what we need to put in these last two blanks. We are going to put the formula here. So see how hydrogen and oxygen make H2O, and that ends up being dihydrogen for two hydrogens, monoxide for one oxygen. Let's go ahead and do this right here. So I have just carbon. I have no prefix in front of it, so that assumes that I have one carbon, and then I have tetrahydride. Remember, no, it's no harm to look at the list. Tetra means four. So that means I have four hydrogens. Okay. Now, what about nitrogen difluoride? No prefix in front of it, so I must only have one nitrogen. Di means two, so I have two fluorines, F2. And that's how you finish.